So, hey everyone, I'm here to assure you, if you stuck around for Kendall's talk, that we will still be employing human beings for the next five to ten years. Uh, so, <laughs> trust me, trust me. And if you, if you guys want, we can have some sidebars afterwards. I can tell you all the great stories of human beings scrubbing, you know, tape from the factory and everything. There's definitely no robots for those that we can program yet. Um, hey everyone, my name is Nathan, Nathan Murphy. Uh, the title of my talk is called Cloud TPU, Don't Mind If I Do. Um, feel free to take a picture of the first slide if you want to stay in touch after the talk through Twitter. Um, so, those of you who don't know, Tesla not only builds cars, electric vehicles, but we also have an energy component to our business, which is another uh, core foundation for what we do. Um, one of the big pieces of energy technology uh, I got the opportunity to work on was the Hornsdale Power Reserve in Australia, which today is the largest lithium-ion battery pack in the world. Um, in the last year, we were able to save Australian electricity customers $40 million uh, by integrating this battery system with uh, wind power uh, sited at this power reserve. Um, and what the opportunity for us was the ability to provide this battery as kind of like a shock absorber for the grid to kind of hedge uh, electricity customers from these large spikes. In order to do this efficiently with our battery pack, we need to be able to predict these sort of high-priced events. And to do that, we sort of build a com built out a component that allowed us to be able to make intelligent decisions about the state of the system and act on that state uh, using what we call Tesla Auto Bidder for the energy component. Now, for those of you who are familiar with Tesla, how many people know about Autopilot? Okay, cool, cool, so roughly at 50%. So Auto Bidder is roughly the analog of Autopilot for the electricity grid. I won't go into too much detail, but this auto bidding component, uh, if I were to break down into those spikes of energy that you saw, uh, essentially sends electricity bids across 12 or 9 to 12 different products in the electricity market every five minutes. Um, you'll see that there is a pricing forecast step an optimization step before, roughly two minutes before you even send a bid. So we need to make decisions within that two minute window of how much we'd like to be offered you know, in dollars per megawatt or dollars per megawatt hour for the battery that we're running at that site. And in order to do this, we're using a variety of open source software components. Um, TensorFlow is a very popular tool that we've been using. Um, and what's great about TensorFlow as an open source tool is that if you run it in traditional hardware, you can still take advantage of CPUs and GPUs, but if you run it on Google Cloud, you get to take advantage of their TPU beta product. Um, so I got a quick demo about what's so great about TPUs. I think the, um, there are a variety of um, key pros and cons to being able to run TensorFlow, but for me, I'd, I'd like to focus on what I find as the improvements in energy density and memory density um, that we get from TPUs uh, for some of our simulations that we run for these products. So really quickly, let's see if this runs. So I have a uh, 2 million by 1024, 1024 matrix that I'm running right here. Um, I'm going to do a matrix multiply of this matrix times a 1,000 by 1 vector, roughly. And uh, oh, let's see how the internet's working. I'm going to give this until about I have a minute left to, before I give up on this demo. Let's see here. If everyone just hops off their Wi-Fi for a little bit. <laughs> Uh, still dialing, still dialing. So this is obviously, uh, what I was going to hope to show actually is a Kubernetes cluster as well running, if uh, I can get that up, but I don't quite have, uh, okay, well, let's just skip that. So I was able to run a couple uh, simulations of this while I was prepping this presentation, and one of the great things about uh, these TPUs, as I said, is its uh, performance density. Now, traditional uh, uh, Pascal architecture NVIDIA chips gives you about roughly 7 to 10 teraflops per second. Um, here's a quick benchmark I ran where you get about 165 uh, teraflops per second, which, okay, that's great and everything, um, but the reliability component, I think, is something that's still missing from this product. But what I find uh, very useful about this, or what I find is a trend in some of these software components that we're seeing, is uh, this tendency for uh, more and more components of the system to be made available to people um, using uh, public cloud providers. Here's a rough architecture of what Cloud TPU offers. You can see gRPC there, another uh, uh, homage to our cloud native theme here. Um, Google isn't the only company making ASICs, right? So Tesla's making ASICs. And on top of that, uh, oh, snap, I have some missing slides. Sorry about that. And they're not loading. It's all good. The internet is not working for me today. What I will say is that there is a tendency now, there's a trend for companies now to offer application-specific chips. And gradually over time, what we'll see is more and more chips 
that are application specific be provided to the cloud. And I think it's a very exciting moment for us to be able to leverage some of the technologies that, we, that we're able to build on the public cloud of today and of tomorrow. So thank you for everyone for sitting in. And uh, rest assured, I will make sure, <laughs> rest assured human beings will still be employed by the end of the decade at least. <laughs>